Hello and welcome to our overview of Trackit Self-Service video. Trackit Self-Service is the end-user web portal which allows end-users on a network to log into their Trackit Help Desk system and log their own tickets for service requests or for problems that they're having or to check the status of their tickets that they've logged in the past. They can also do things like search a knowledge base to look for solutions to issues or see the assets or computers that are assigned to them and the details about those systems. Depending on how your administrator has configured your system, some of those options may or may not be available. Now, as I mentioned before, the self-service portal is a web portal. And to get to that web portal, you will usually have a URL that consists of a server name or a domain name, and then a slash, and then track it, and then a slash, and then self-service. When you go to that URL, you will then be taken to a login screen that looks something like this. Depending on how your administrator has configured your system, this may look slightly different, but this is the default login screen. There are two different ways to log into the self-service portal. You can log in with a track it self-service user ID and password, which should be supplied to you by your administrator. Or you can log into the system using AD authentication with the Windows account you're logged into your system with. It depends on how your administrator has configured your system as to how you will actually log in. So for the purposes of this example, we are logging in using a Trackit self-service user ID and password. My user is rrequester. I have typed my password already, and then I just have a login button. If my administrator had enabled AD authentication for this account, I would see another link below here that says log in with your Windows credentials. And when I clicked on that, it would automatically fill in my Windows domain information here, and then just ask me to select the language that I want to use. If I wanted to bookmark my self-service page, I can bookmark server name slash track it slash self-service if I'm using the standard track it user ID and login. And if I am using the AD auth option for automatic Windows authentication, I can bookmark server name slash track it slash self-service slash login, which would look like this. This URL would take me straight to the AD authentication login if my system was set up that way. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and log in with my self-service user ID and password. So this is the default self-service interface. This is the home page of self-service. In the top right, I have a menu bar up here. You'll notice there's a drop down next to my login name. If I click on that, You'll see I can go into About Self-Service. That'll give me more information about the system. I can click Getting Started, and that will give me an overview of how to use the system. I can click on Profile Settings, and that will give me information about my profile. And if I'm allowed by my administrator, I can then update these settings. And we also have the Log Out button. Next to my profile drop down there is the Help link. If I click on this, it will take me to the online help documentation for the self-service portal. And next to that is the announcements button. If there were new announcements that were relevant to me, I would see a little red indicator on here. And when I clicked on that, it would pop this window open and show me all of the announcements. I would also see important announcements on the default home page here on the right hand side. Currently, there are no announcements in my system for me, so this is empty. In the center of the home page here for self service, we have the search for solutions button the Create New Ticket button, and the View My Tickets button. You will notice that those same options are here on the left, Create New Ticket, Solutions, and My Tickets. And then you'll also see on the left there are custom links. And right now we have one link to the TrackIt website. Your administrator can configure these however they like and add links to your internal intranet site or to other helpful pages that they want you to have access to. So let's take a look at the three options we have here in front of us. We have Search for Solutions, the first time you come in here with a problem, you might want to go into the solutions module and search and see if you can find something that will help you solve the problem on your own. So let's search for print. And we see that we have one solution that deals with printing. And you'll notice over here on the right hand side, this article has zero stars and also has zero issues resolved with this particular solution. So if the solution documented here had been used to resolve some other users problems, you would see the number of times that had been used here. And you, as the end user, can also rate the solution as to how useful you believe it is. So let's go ahead and click on the solution, take a look at what it looks like in here. So here's the sample solution about how to troubleshoot problems in Outlook. And you'll notice I can rate the solution here on the side. If I was actually having this exact problem and the solution had helped me, 
I would go ahead and go over here and click five stars and say, this is great. And I would click rate. And now my rating of this article will be combined with other users' ratings of this article to show an overall star rating for this article in future searches by other users. So let's go back and take a look at the search again to look at some of the options. You have the options all words and phrases, which acts like an and. So any words or phrases you type in the search box will have to be found in the solution in order to show up in the results. Any of the words and phrases means that any of the words or phrases you type into this box can be found in the article. So that would broaden your search quite a bit. As far as what is a word and what is a phrase, here the word print obviously is just a word. But if I wanted a phrase, I would say outlook, and I would enclose that with quotes. Now that is a phrase. And then if I put another search term in here like this, password, reset, that's another phrase. So now I'm either going to get all these phrases, which means both of these would have to be in the solution in order to show up in the result, or any of the phrases would mean either one of these needs to show up in the result. So if I click search, you'll notice I get password reset, and that's one of my phrases, and I have any of the words or phrases, which is the or, so that's why I get that. If I say all words and phrases and search again, I get nothing because I don't have anything that has the phrase print outlook and password reset in the same solution. Now I could remove the quotes around this one and let's just say Outlook and say all words and phrases and hit search. Again, I get nothing. If I say any of the words and phrases and hit search, now I get both of the solutions in my sample data here. I get this one because it contains the word Outlook and I get this one because it contains password reset. You also have the option of browsing solutions. If you click on the browse solutions tab, you can pick the topic drop down here and select a topic and it will show you all of the solutions within that topic. And then you can also sort them by rating or last update or how many issues were resolved with that particular solution. Now I'm going to go back to the home screen and I'm going to click view my tickets. This is a list of all the tickets that this user has submitted previously. And right now it's filtered on open tickets. I can click this little filter and say all, or I can click it again and say closed, and you'll notice status closed is here on the left. If I hit open, you'll notice I see open. You'll notice if I say all, I'll see open and closed ones in my list. To open one of these, I just click on it. I have the option of canceling it if I would like to, if I no longer need the help. If I click more details, it'll expand and show me more details down here at the bottom. Let me expand this window so we can see the whole thing. I can add additional notes here. And when a technician or a system note gets entered, that will show up in this conversation view here as well. And I'll see those notes from the help desk technician who's trying to help me or from the system notes when things happen to the ticket like the status being changed or something being assigned. I also have a filter here so I could filter on requester, technician, and system notes. So if I don't want to see the system notes, I only want to see the conversation between myself and the technician, I can do that. I can add an attachment here if I would like, if I have a screenshot or something that I want to add. As I mentioned before, I can cancel the ticket if I want by just clicking cancel ticket. I can enter Y. I can click OK. And then that ticket has been canceled. And you'll notice that it's marked closed and my note has been inserted in here as well. Now I'm going to go back to the home screen for just a moment. And then I'm going to click on create new ticket so you can see what that looks like. Here I have the option of selecting from common requests configured by my administrator. So I click on this. I would get a list of common requests that would be in my system. Things like that would be like password resets or requests for a new cell phone if I lost mine, things like that. Your administrator will configure this based on your particular installation. If I have an issue that's not a common request, I can just say printer is not working. I have my callback number in here. I can say that my priority is medium because it's impacting me, but it's not horrible. I can come in here and say that I am having a hardware issue. So I'm going to hit submit ticket. And now this ticket shows up in my list. And that has been a brief overview of the TrackIt self-service portal. Please check out our other videos on TrackIt 2017 by accessing our online documentation by clicking the help link in the upper right hand corner of the TrackIt application. 
You can also find our documentation page by following the link here, docs.bmc.com slash docs slash display slash track at 2017. Some other important links to remember are the Trackit community, where you can talk about Trackit features and functionality with other Trackit users at community.trackit.com. If you need technical assistance, you can find phone numbers and other contact information for our technical support team at support.trackit.com. And for general license renewal and product information, you can always visit trackit.com. That concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope it has been helpful to you.